When things stop falling apart, you start to worry that something is wrong with the way your life is going. Things breaking apart is natural. The 10 things that INFJs pay attention to that other people don't will be shown for you. Number 10. What your physical cues actually indicate. Body language often serves as a substitute for words in conveying the message that a person wants to convey. The INFJ is able to notice things that most people are unable to dot what's truly being spoken by your body language. The majority of the time, your body language is the opposite of what you say. There is a common misunderstanding about body language. The INFJ is able to discern what body language is attempting to convey, such as when someone is squirming in their seat. Although it's simple to assume that someone is anxious, there's much more to them than just anxiety. The INFJ has a talent for figuring it out because they pay close attention to individuals. Number 9. Speaking Style The way you speak reveals a lot about you, and it can also irritate others. The INFJ needs some time to interpret and understand what you're trying to say. INFJs take satisfaction in being able to tell how well they know someone from the way they communicate. It would appear to be a judgment to categorize people solely based on the way they speak, but this is not the case. The INFJ has the characteristic of getting to know individuals better before putting their faith in them. They maintain their personal space and conduct comprehensive background checks on everybody they allow into their lives. Number 8. Tingling Within INFJs are a particular subgroup of introverts that struggle to convey their true emotions. The INFJ places a high value on intimacy since it allows them to be completely authentic without worrying about being criticized. You hold the key to their comfort, after all. As a result of their suspicion-filled thinking, INFJs deliberate extremely carefully about whom to expose their hearts to. Nobody understands your objectives better than you, thus they are uniquely yours. You can set goals for your future self, and when the moment is right and the chance arises, seize it with both hands. This will help you get there gradually. The goals of introverts are fiercely held in high regard. Relationships may make or break an INFJ since they are sensitive to interior sensations, which Felix may find annoying. There is no relationship to help it flourish from the start, though, without the acknowledgement of internal feelings. Number 7. Energy Being Released In order to promote societal connectedness and fraternity, vibes are crucial. People require the INFJ's capacity to discern the type of energy people emit. INFJs pay attention to even the smallest details. They monitor individuals from a distance, which gives them a keen eye for detail, and being too nervous to engage in conversation with them. The INFJ is able to determine whether the energy being delivered to them is helpful or bad for them. They are highly sensitive to even the tiniest shifts in energy or vibes. The INFJ draws the conclusion that you despise them as a result of the vibrations you exude. Strange energy is nearly always negative energy. Number 6. Maintaining good friendships. It's been stated that having good friends is more important than having lots of them. INFJs are the kind of introverts who, for some reason, find it difficult to understand why extroverts feel the need to be so social, where they are unable to serve them all at once. This is a sign that INFJs always choose carefully who they choose to become friends with. If an INFJ criticizes you for having too many friends, it's because they keep their social circles limited and focused. It's a clue that some of those supposedly close buddies aren't actually close friends of yours. Only when it's convenient for them and when you need them will they be there for you. They are never available, and it is always preferable to be a lonely loser than to have many close friends who secretly despise you. Number 5. What motivates people to behave as they do? How extroverts have so much energy and don't get tired at all is a mystery that never ceases to amaze. Who or what is supplying all that energy? Why do they have that much energy, and how come? As a matter of fact, the INFJ finds extroverts to be genuinely intimidating and holds this belief. They have endless energy, thus. Although having too much or too little energy might be problematic, it is generally a healthy thing. Balance your energy output to others, it will serve you better. Despite the absence of any animosity, the extrovert's acts seem to perplex the INFJs. By answering the INFJ's queries about the extrovert's energy, the resulting uncertainty can be cleared up. Number 4. Why are you acting in this manner? 
We are made up primarily of our family and little outside influence. The INFJ questions why people behave in the ways that they do. Each person is unique in their own way. Some people take pleasure in their own company. Others are reliant upon others. It's all a matter of perspective, and the INFJ is asking this issue because they value their personal space and want other people to do the same. In retrospect, we can change who we are, but we cannot allow others to alter our circumstances. It is entirely up to us whether we choose to enjoy the benefits of personal space and doing things our way or depend on others for all that is going on in our lives. Your life is always at stake. Number three, the tedious tasks they perform. The INFJ is known to be very observant, which means that even the smallest things can have an impact on them. These things happen to INFJ since they tend to overthink things a lot. One of the reasons they question whether extroverts or people dislike them is because of this. Get impacted by events as well. People start to retrace their steps and consider whether they are easily impacted by things after noticing that the INFJ makes these observations. Life's conflict is such a precarious situation. Everything can fall apart with just one bad move. However, the INFJ and all of us must adopt the belief that things must fall apart in order for other things to fall together. Number two, how to deal with issues. Problems are one of the most difficult things in life to tackle because they need time, effort, and almost anything. If you lack creativity, the world will fall apart around you. People that are INFJ are said to be tenacious and laser-focused. That is the main cause of their constant interest in other people's problem-solving techniques. The INFJ can effectively use this observation to work toward resolving their own issues. Fundamentally, the INFJ explores opportunities and eliminates obstacles in order to accomplish a goal. Number one is living a simple life, or genuinely you. People today have accepted the fact that life is difficult in many ways, but it's actually a huge blessing to be alive in this day and age. Living is a gift, even though it can be difficult at times since those within and outside are dying. Both easy and challenging aspects of life are felt by INFJs. The INFJ's alert temperament might benefit others by coming up with fresh ideas for how to make life worthwhile. Considering as the saying goes, life doesn't get any simpler. Just get more powerful. Whether it is a minor or large detail, every individual matters. The INFJ observes traits and aspects about you that you might not even be aware of. This can work in your favor because it will enable you to develop both personally and as a member of the community. Despite the fact that INFJs are complex individuals, they greatly benefit society in this way. Everybody needs an INFJ in their life to keep things in balance. The INFJ is frequently seen as a bother to others because they feel intimidated by them, but they may actually hold the key to curing society's ills. They act as the connecting thread between everything. What are the things that occupy a lot of your mind space? Do you identify with the INFJ?